good evening. Welcome this evening. Welcome to our service here at Willstone Baptist Church, those of us in the building and those joining online. Let's uh, begin with some words from one of the Psalms, Psalm 25, and then we're going to stand to sing. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, which shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Shall we stand? <laughs> That great Welsh hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Uh, before you and give you songs of praises for who you are and for what you've done. Lord, you have transformed our lives. Where would we be if you hadn't met with us? Lord, we have no idea, but we would be lost. And now we're found. And we gather here to raise our voices, to give you praise, to thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, meet with us, we pray. Amen. Let's continue to praise. Let everything has breath. Praise the Lord. Everything that 
everything that everything that has breath praise the lord let everything that everything that everything that has breath praise the lord praise you in the morning praise you in the evening praise you when i'm young and when i'm old praise you when i'm laughing praise you when i'm grieving praise you every season of the soul if we could see how much you're worth your power your might your endless love then surely we would never cease to Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praise you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If they could see how much your worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely they would never cease to praise. Everything that, everything that, everything that praise the Lord that everything that everything that everything that has breath praise the Lord I will worship I will worship I will worship you with every breath I will worship I will worship I will worship you with every breath let everything that everything that Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the All the hosts of heaven Who else can make every king bow down Who else can whisper in darkness trembles Only a holy God What of a beauty demands such praises What of a splendor outshines the sun, what of a majesty rules with justice, only a holy God, come and behold him, the one and the only, cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the Holy God. What of a glory consumed like fire? What of a power can raise the dead? What of a name remains undefeated? Only a holy Come and behold him, the one and the only. Cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the holy God. 
could rescue me from my failings Who else would offer his only son Who else invites me to call him father Only a holy God Only my holy God Come and behold him The one and the only Cry out, sing holy Forever a holy God Come and worship the holy God Oh, come and Behold him, the one and the only. Cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the holy God. Come and worship the holy God. Let's just pause for a moment before the Lord. We've sung that let every breath that we have praise the Lord. And we've sung of his holiness. Yet in his holiness, he reaches down and cleanses us so that we may stand before him. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the one who was and is and is to come. Lord, we give you our praise. It's all we have to offer, Lord. It's, it seems inadequate to say thank you for all that you've done, but Lord, that's what we can offer. And Lord, we thank you. As a, as a father here in the, the songs of, the, of his children, you receive them. They may not be perfect. They may be out of tune. They may be at times sound like one song sung to the tune of another, but Lord, you see them as a, a father who hears his child singing to him and you welcome them as, your, as praise to your name. Lord, as we've said this morning, today we worship you imperfectly, but one day they'll be, we'll gather around that throne with every believer from every generation, the heavenly beings and all creation, and we'll sing your praise in perfect song. Hallelujah. my shepherd I'll not want He makes me lie in pastures green He leads me by 
the still, still water. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head. in you alone and I will trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home and though I walk the darkest path I will not fear the evil one, for you are with me, and your rod and staff are the comfort I need to know, and I will trust in you. trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home praise you Lord thank you thank you for the the comfort that comes that you will lead us home, wherever the valley, the mountain top, or whatever in between, you'll lead us. Uh, Lord, as we turn to your word, we just w- we just want to hear you speak to us again tonight, Lord. Lord, remind us of things we've forgotten. Show us things we've not noticed, uh, and reinforce words that you've spoken in the past. We pray in your name, Amen. for joining us thank you for joining us on this bank holiday weekend <laughs> and it seems you know, it's not the end of august it doesn't seem like it but it is the bank holiday weekend so it's good that you're here we've um, in the evenings we've been having did you know um almost like preacher's choice is the is what's been on people's hearts and as i've spoken in the evening i've i've been reflecting on different things to do with a, a being in Israel, we had two weeks in Israel, or 12 days, and different things in there stood out, and I've used those. Uh, if you'll bear with me, one more, and that I want to look at tonight. And it's a, a particular church that, uh, that's on the Mount of Olives. I'll come to that in a minute. But the overall theme is prayer. And one of the reasons is, um, I've t- last week, well, me and Tracy were away, we were down in, uh, uh, for most of it in Dorset, on a family camp run by um, Urban Saints. It used to be called Crusaders, changed the name to Urban Saints. And we were down there, and uh, it meant when they had the, their meetings in the morning, it was lots of action songs and that. 
and we were doing the story of Joseph and uh, I got to play the role of Jacob and that. Uh, but it's a good time to reflect because there's lots of free time and thinking about different things, thinking about the morning service and things. One of the things to me is, is prayer. In the last few years, we'd, we're British. We don't, well, many of us British don't share about how our devotional lives are. Well, in the last few years, say last, it must be four years, my Bible reading has improved. I've managed to stick to a plan that's, read, that's gone through the Bible in, in a year. Um, I'm actually nine days ahead at the moment. And, and I've been a Christian 38 years in July. It's just gone. And it took me 34 of those years to really get around to consistently reading the Bible on a daily basis. Prayer-wise, I've not managed that yet. And I think I just want to get more in a routine of prayer. There are times when... When I pray better, and there's times when I struggle, and you may be able to relate to this as well, there'll be times. So just reflecting on, on prayer, and reflecting on Jesus, teaching on prayer, and reflecting on a particular place on the Mount of Olives. If you go on the Mount of Olives, you're in Jerusalem, and you exit out the, um, the Lion Gate and go up on the Mount of Olives, there's a church on there um, called uh, Paternoster Church. Paternoster, oh, we'll be on the, we'll put up on the PowerPoint. Paternoster is Latin, and it's the first two words, as it says there, of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in Latin that begins Paternoster. Um, and there's a church there. It's built on the site, allegedly, as I said before. Some of these things may be definitely where it will happen, some of them maybe not. It's allegedly the site where Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer. Now, if you read Matthew's account, he seems to be teaching the Lord's Prayer up in Galilee. Luke's account, he seems to be teaching it on the journey between Galilee and Jerusalem. So, maybe he taught it more than once, I don't know. I don't think it really matters at all. The fact is that this church is dedicated to, uh, because they say this is where Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer. And the, um, back in the 12th century, the, the um, uh, Crusaders built a church on the site, and the current church was built in the uh, 1800s by a lady who was married to a French prince and gave it over to the Carmelite community. And all around the building, they've, they have got the Lord's Prayer. It's done in tiles, and that ceramic tiles, all around the building in different languages. There's currently 144 languages around the wall, if you go on their website, allegedly, you can, you can, uh, they've got more, which I haven't added yet. But I, I was fascinated going around and just finding them, because amongst all these different plaques, looking around for the different languages. So I've just got a few. As you say, it's French run, so anglais rather than English. But the English one, Our Father Who Art in Heaven, the King James Version, which will be familiar to you. But I've got some others which are, well, uh, the Lord's Prayer in Arabic and that the Lord's Prayer in Spanish in Tamil I don't know can you speak can you read Tamil Does it Amen. Wonderful. Yeah. I tried to find ones of language I knew we had here. So, and that's some of them. Uh, Farsi. I mean, it's Grace reads Farsi. I didn't know that here was that. Romanian, although the R looks more like a P. It looks like an R on here. Up on the other right there. But in Romanian. That. And then there's some a couple of unusual ones. Cornish. And I, th I, th <laughs> I know it might be your heritage, Neil, but I don't suppose you did it at school. Yeah. But Cornish. And then another one which surprised me. Cherokee. <laughs> I, who would have known the difference? It seems to have a lot less words in it, so I don't know if one word means a lot. But I don't know. Yes, I was added in the year 2000. 
But they had, as you go around, it was fascinating going around, and you could find the groups of people that were there would gravitate to there. So if you went, you wanted to go down one corridor, and in the middle of it on the wall was a Polish one, and a whole group of Polish people were crowded around, and we couldn't get past. We found <laughs> that far end, because everyone was going around. I, I admit, I went to find the English one. That was the first thing I did. I thought, where is the English one? And went round. But it's all dedicated to the Lord's Prayer. And I've just been reflecting on that and just thinking about that teaching that Jesus gave. So I just want to read Luke's account of that teaching and what Jesus said and just reflect upon this and maybe reflect on prayer and how, I guess, my own prayer that we might, uh, that I maybe us would, uh, would move on in prayer. Luke 11, verses 1 to 10. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who has sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey and he's come to me, and I've no food to offer him. And suppose the one outside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked. My children and I are all in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you, uh, give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Why do we pray? We might say because of the teaching of the whole of Scripture, the teaching of the Old Testament prophets, then the Psalms and the examples of them, the, uh, the t teaching of Jesus. But in this example, it's the example of Jesus. Jesus goes off to pray and his disciples see him praying, and they realize that this regular prayer, which it, which it was, was something that was key to his, his relationship with the Lord and, and the Father. And he says, they say, teach us to pray. Luke's gospel has got a lot of prayer in it. If you read Luke's gospel, you'll find it records Jesus at prayer more than any other times. I was just looking through. Chapter 3, verse 21, Jesus is praying at his baptism. Chapter 6, verse 12, before choosing the 12 disciples, Jesus goes to pray. Chapter 9, verse 18, before Peter, Peter's confession of him being the Messiah, Jesus spends time alone in prayer and then challenges the disciples, saying, who do you say I am? Chapter 9, at the transfiguration, Jesus is recording praying. Chapter 22, in Gethsemane, before his arrest, Jesus prays. And then on the cross, he prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And maybe others I didn't notice, but Luke records a lot about prayer in his gospel, and particularly Jesus praying. And maybe it just occurs to me, the thing that inspired Luke to notice prayer, maybe, remember he travelled around with Paul. He was one in Acts, he's with Paul travelling around. Maybe it was the example of Paul, he saw Paul praying. And he looked at Jesus and recorded prayer. And maybe that had an impact on him. And he saw that this was a key part of what of, of spiritual life. Here's prayer. He's talking with God. And so, and so the disciples come to Jesus and say, Jesus, we've seen you praying. Teach us to pray. John taught his disciples. Can you teach us? And then he comes with the, well, what we know as the Lord's Prayer. And that version we read was quite short. Matthew's is slightly longer because of the way different manuscripts have an extra bit at the end about uh, yours be the power and the glory power yours be the kingdom power and the glory so that's included in the king james version 
and that, which is what may be familiar with us if we particularly if we grew up with it. And Jesus teaches them. He teaches them it as as a pattern of prayer. He doesn't teach it as a mantra to say, this is a prayer, say this. Though we can, and we do. Churches, we have done on many occasions, have said the, the Lord's Prayer together. But Jesus teaches it as a prayer. So, when do we pray? Well, Jesus begins that, verse 2, when you pray, say. He doesn't say if you pray, when you pray. He was... He expected his people to pray. So when do we pray? Well, Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, pray continually. How do we understand that? Uh, clearly, it's not, um, it's not a case of walking around with our eyes closed. Pray continually. I think it's having an attitude of prayer, living your lives in a prayerful way, that you're living it, being aware that the Lord's, Lord may speak into anything that happens because prayer's two ways. It's not just us speaking to him, it's him speaking to us. So we live our lives. As we go along each day, bringing the things that happen in our lives before him. Silent prayer. It's, um, there's a quote, I found it attributed to Spurgeon, although I found it attributed to Smith Wigglesworth and other, various other people. It says, I never pray for more than 10 minutes, but then I never leave more than 10 minutes without praying. I think that's maybe a, 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 a steep example, but it gives you the idea. It's, it's, it's not that, right, I've had my 10 minutes prayer in the morning and that's it, done for the day. I can forget about prayer. It's that attitude of prayer as we live out our lives. And it's finding what suits us. We all read about the great, the great heroes of the faith who, who would pray early in the morning or, or would spend all night in prayer. And some of us have tried it and sometimes that's been a great blessing and sometimes that's been a failure. Charles Price, who was a, as a preacher I, I used to hear quite a lot up at Keswick, he said he, when he was a young man, he read um, James Hudson Taylor's biography. He's the, um, the man who has set up um, what was OMF, China Inland Mission became OMF, a great missionary. And he said, James Hudson Taylor, in his biography, he says he used to get up at five in the morning and pray for two hours before he'd start his day. And so Charles Price thought, as a young man, that's the key. So he said, I got up and early, he said, all I discovered was, in doing that, I got sore knees and cold coffee from that. It just didn't work for him. <laughs> and it's working out what works in your pattern. I don't know. Find the time to pray. It may be in the morning. A morning's a great way of starting the day. It may be in the evening, bringing the things of the day before the Lord. Maybe both. But being realistic about what we can achieve. But finding the space. And remember... It's a sacrifice of prayer. We might say, oh, well, I, I just can't find any time. But we're called to meet with the Lord in prayer and find that sacrifice. Where do we pray? It could be anywhere. It could be if we pray in church, but we can pray in our home. Some people, I particularly, I find at times going for a walk. Maybe that's because there's less distractions than praying. Um, we might find those great times when we're, I know, in the mountains, by the sea, in, uh, somewhere remote. And we might have a great time of prayer, but Jesus encourages us to have that regular time of prayer in the place where we are most, in our homes, to find a regular space to pray, to set aside time. And Jesus himself would, would go off in his own to pray, it says at times, to away from distractions. We'll, I come, sometimes on Friday nights when we're running Energize, we, when we have a prayer time, we say, um, um, put your hands together and close your eyes. We say, it's not that that makes it any more holy, it's just that when you've got your eyes closed and your hands are together, you're not going to fiddle with anything or look around and get distracted. And maybe that's a good practice to, to, to not be distracted and focus on the Lord or to get our way, find space in that. So how do we pray? I just wrote down a few things. Funnily enough, they all begin with P. Not that it matters. Pray privately. We need to spend time when we're with the Lord on our own. It's our relationship with Him. There will be corporate prayer when we gather together. We were up until the summer having Wednesday evening prayer meetings, and a few of us were gathered. Some of you amongst that group, and I, I want to see how we, that group can grow. And so 
this week's a fellowship meeting, but the following week, the, the whatever day that is, the 6th, is it? I don't know. I don't know if I wrote it down. Right, not this coming Wednesday, the one after, we'll have, our, we'll have a prayer meeting, and we'll try and make an emphasis of trying to encourage people to come along, get other pe various people lead, and have a regular prayer meeting on a Wednesday evening that we gather together as a church. At the same time, there's still be the, uh, the war room still continues on some mornings, and maybe we just need to look at this whole subject of how we might pray corporately, but also privately. What I want most of all is our own prayer lives, and mine, I'm thinking of myself, that I might grow in prayer and discover more about prayer. So prayer, privately, priority. Prayer is important, and what we pray for is important. We pray for God's kingdom before Adam. The, or the order in that prayer is, your kingdom come, your will be done, is said before, give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. The first thing is about honouring God in that prayer, before we start to consider ourselves. And, and sometimes, particularly when we might be new in the faith, prayers are we want to bring before the Lord all our concerns. But focus on him first. Get the priorities right. Posture. It doesn't matter if we sit, we stand, we kneel. Except that maybe we express to God in these things our heart. That when we kneel, we're doing it because we're submitting ourselves to him. So sometimes we might want to consider how we pray. Bow our hearts and maybe physically represent that to the Lord. Pattern of prayer? Well, the Lord's Prayer is one pattern we can follow. Our Father, focusing on him first, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Then move into, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others, in that forgiving others, making sure there aren't things that we're holding on to ourselves which maybe interfere with our communication with the Lord. And then coming back round to focus on his kingdom to finish. Or maybe other prayers, prayer of St. Francis, or there's many others, many other resources. But just looking at the pattern, maybe, maybe getting even a, a so like the Book of Common Prayer and just using some of the prayers in there or different things that might help us just to speak to the Lord and, re and interact with him. Persistence. That's what we need to pray for. That's what I need to pray for, that we don't give up. The example Jesus used there was about a man who had a friend coming at midnight and goes to another friend and says, can I have some bread? He says, no, we're all settled down for the night. We've locked the doors. We've all gone to bed. And he, and he pleads and eventually gets given it. Jesus talked about the persistent widow who went to a judge. And in both circumstances, uh, Jesus says that these people did it because they're your the persistent uh, badgering in one way, how much more will God answer his prayers? Sometimes it might seem that God doesn't answer our prayers and we have to be persistent and we have to keep going. It's not because God is slow to anger as if that we have to persuade him. Sometimes he wants to know how much we mean it. Think about when, you, when you've, got, if you've got children who are saying they want a present for Christmas and they mention it once Somewhere around September, they say, oh, at Christmas, can I have this? And then they seem to forget about it, and, uh, and, that, and you think, well, I didn't really want it anyway, do they? Or ones that mention it day after day, week after week, say, oh, this is what I'm looking forward to. You know that this is what they really want. And I think some ways it is with prayer. I think sometimes our prayers, we'll say a prayer and then move on, and God says, well, I don't know. How, how serious are you about what you've been asking? Because it's almost like you've said it and moved on and forgotten it. But there are times where we are persistent in prayer and the Lord knows that we are serious about what we're asking. And I think at those times, he answers. And passion. Sometimes our prayers may not reflect the passion of the topic. We're asking something seriously and it might be, well, Lord, uh, if you, in your will, if it's not too much trouble, not exactly that, those sort of things. It's not wrong to share our, our passion with the Lord. Read the Psalms. The Psalms 
I've got every emotion in there as they cry out and pour out their hearts to the Lord. So it, God isn't afraid for us to be honest with him. He already knows what's on our heart anyway. So that we might passionately share our prayers and power. Ultimately, the result isn't down to our prayers. It's down to the one we pray to. It's the Lord. It's in him that he answers the prayers. He is the one that changes circumstances. Prayer is powerful, not because of the prayer, but because of the one who hears and answers. And God is good. He is good. He is sovereign. He is able to answer, and he does answer. And we have examples of that in our own lives amongst our congregation. God has proved himself. So what do we do about it? Well, I ask you to pray for me in my prayer life. I, I, my, my prayer life would improve this year. I think it's a key thing to the church. Um, Robert Murray McShane, he was a, a Scottish minister who, um, uh, who lived well over 100 years ago. He, ha he didn't live very long. He died fairly young in life, but he was a man of prayer. And they say, that, uh, the, his congregation said, he prays for us and his prayers make a difference. And I think that is the case. And so I want to, I want to grow in prayer because I think that will make a difference to everybody else here. So pray for me in that. Pray for us as we join together corporately to pray as a congregation and seek the Lord and to grow in prayer. Uh, I, have, I have the experience I have and I'm sure there's so much more and maybe together we can take each other on further. Using resources, the resources we can find and use to help us in this. To pray corporately, to pray personally, to seek the Lord that we might grow in prayer. They say that if you want to embarrass the congregation, ask them about their prayer life. I, I'm sure that often that's true, but I hope that we would move forwards and that would be less, <laughs> less of an embarrassment, that we might grow in prayer. Let me lead us in prayer now. Lord, as the disciples asked, we ask as well. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, would you raise up in my heart, in our, in our hearts, a passion for prayer? Would you help us, in not just in speaking, but listening, of learning how the communication works both ways, that we may be more sensitive to the leading of your Spirit? Lord, where our prayer lives are, are narrow because of that sort all of our experience, Lord, would you broaden them and help us to understand the wider aspects of communicating with you, Lord. Lord, would you help us on a daily basis to be consciously um, living our lives before you in an attitude of prayer that will be sensitive to your leading in the events of our daily lives, but also to bring the things, the aspects of the things that happen before you, whether it's to, to thank you for the things we notice or bring them before you as a, as a request or question. Lord, pray for us as a congregation that we might grow in prayer. Lord, our prayer meetings are not the biggest attended events of the weeks. But Lord, we pray that would grow. Lord, it was an encouragement to hear last week when a, a, a couple were visiting, to hear uh, about the church that they're at in Wales and how their prayer meetings have taken off and, and they have all ages represented there, even children joining and praying. Lord, I can only ima imagine what that's like. Lord, may, may we get to see those things, we pray. Lord, we just ask, take us forwards, take us a step forwards this year in praying.
Lord, teach us to pray, we ask. In your name. Amen. song we haven't sung for a while I will seek your face O Lord Say, I give you permission to ask me how my prayer life's going <laughs> as we go through this year. Shall we stand? face, O oh Lord, I will seek your face, O oh Lord, I will seek your face, O oh Lord, I will seek your face, O oh Lord. Lord, how awesome is your prayer. Who can stand in your light? For those who by your grace and mercy are made holy in your sight. I will seek your face, O Lord. I will seek your face, O Lord. face, O oh Lord. I will seek your face, O oh Lord. I will dwell in your presence all the days of my life. There to gaze upon your glory. And to worship only you I will seek your face, O oh Lord 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 I will seek your face, O Lord. 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 going to end with the, the Lord's Prayer. I grew up knowing the King James because we did it at school. So if you do, please join. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.